roughly a year ago, longtime Kramer fave Honeywell broke itself up into three separate companies. Spinning off their auto parts business as Garrett Motion and their climate control slash home security business as Residio. Since then, I've been following the situation pretty darn closely, but both because I own Honeywell for the Travel Trust. Oh, you can follow along by joining me, ActionAlertsPlus.com club. And because you know I love these breakup stories. I always feel they create good value. However... Some spinoffs are a lot more enticing than others. Sometimes a big conglomerate breaks itself up because it's sitting on an underappreciated asset that's not getting enough respect from them, not enough attention. Other times, though, you spin out a division because it's struggling and you want to wash your hands of it. And that's what Honeywell did here. They washed their hands of the super cyclical auto parts and climate control divisions, residential kind. The new, leaner, meaner Honeywell can focus on aerospace, non-residential construction, and industrial software, which are more consistent end markets. That was a brilliant call. In the last few months, Garrett Motion and Residio have been hammered with Residio in particular just getting entirely obliterated this week in a fashion that I didn't think was possible. Now that we've had a year to observe these three, uh, these new uh, independent companies, I think it's worth giving them another look, Uh, along with Honeywell itself. So have the spinoffs come down to the point where they're attractive here? No. Let me make this crystal clear. Honeywell's a very smart company run by the brilliant Darius Adamchak, and you don't want to be buying what he's selling. If he didn't want exposure to autos and climate control here, then maybe you shouldn't want it either. Let's take a look at them one by one, starting with Garrett Motion, which makes components for the auto industry. I've always been the best in its industry, believe me. They sell turbochargers, which I always loved when things were good in the auto industry. There's the best, electric boosters, and some software for cars and trucks, always considered to be the gold standard. Now, Garrett had the misfortune of being spun off right into the market-wide meltdown at the end of last year. The stock plunged from $18 and change in October all the way down to $11 by early December. After that, it briefly got its groove back. By late April, Garrett traded at $19.71. But then it rolled over again, and it hasn't really looked back since, sinking to $9 and changes up today. The darn thing's been cut in half over the last six months. No wonder Honeywell wanted it out. I think the weakness here actually makes a ton of sense. Garrett's an auto parts company, and the auto industry's in dire straits, not to be confused with the ban dire straits, because Ford and GM definitely are not the sultans of swing. GM reports next week, but Ford the other night was just not so good. If we're building fewer cars, of course, Garrett's going to sell fewer turbochargers. For a while, the stock appeared to be cheap, but this was one of those what we call value trap situations that you often find right before a cyclical downturn. For instance, at the end of March, Garrett looked like it was selling at just four times earnings. And that should have been, though. See, what that is, is a huge red flag. Oh, I have to throw a yellow flag because I'm on the wrong side of the thing here. I'll throw a yellow flag. Um, stocks simply don't get that cheap unless Wall Street genuinely believes that the estimates are about to be, be crushed. In July, sure enough, Garrett reported a hideous revenue shortfall and slashed its full-year organic growth. And now the stock, what can I say? It has become a total punching bag. Here we go. We know Garrett reports again in two weeks, and I doubt you'll like what you hear. Why not? Because last month we learned that the CFO, Chief Financial, will be leaving the company to, quote, pursue other interests. You hate to see a top executive leave after just one year as an independent company, even if this particular executive has been doing a bad job of forecasting where the business is headed. It's just not a sign of confidence. For the moment, Garrett's a show-me story in an awful market. We need to see some evidence of a turn in the auto industry before we can think of owning this one. I don't see such a turn. How about this Residio, the uh, maker of home climate control and security systems? Okay, just like Garrett, this thing got hammered right after the spinoff because the market was rolling over. The stock traded uh, started trading at 28 bucks before sinking to $19 in its lows. Unlike Garrett, though, Residio didn't get much of a bounce, climbing to 26 at its highs in February. For the next eight months, the stock gradually worked its way down to $15 as the company posted a series of not-so-hot quarters, which brings us to Tuesday night when Residio pre-announced a stunning shortfall and the stock collapsed, plunging nearly 40% the next day to nine bucks and change. With our current ultra-low mortgage rates, you'd think they'd have a winner here. You'd think business might be getting better for a company that's linked to the red-hot housing market, at least judged by the soaring housing stocks. Nope. Presidio pre-announced some awful numbers for the third quarter, as well as slashing its full-year forecast. Even worse, we learned 
Yep, that the chief financial officer of this one is leaving too. It's almost comical how both Honeywell spinoffs are losing their CFOs here. Management's so worried that they told us that they're conducting a comprehensive operational and financial review. That's not something you do when times are good, and it's something they should have thought about before they spun it off. Turns out Residia is having some serious company-specific issues. Their legacy portfolio of thermostats and security systems are a bit dated. Much less attractive in a world where everyone wants connected versions of the stuff from Google or Amazon, Residia is developing their own smart systems, but they carry lower margins and the rollout's been marred by execution problems. That said, housing is a much better end market than autos. I think Residia stock is genuinely cheap here. But management can't seem to get out of their own way. My view, don't even consider buying this one until we see some sign that management has a plan, a plan to turn things around. After catching up with these two spinoffs, I have even more respect for the actual stock, Honeywell, the parent. Getting rid of Garrett and Residio right at those uh, uh, moments where the economy had peaked, that was brilliant. Right now, Honeywell is one of the best performing uh, industrials out there. It's up 30% for the year in an environment that's been tough on the industrials. They'd be doing much worse if they had held on to the housing and auto divisions. Instead, they're in surprisingly good shape. Last week, Honeywell reported a robust quarter, a nice earnings beat with a small revenue miss, but mostly okay guidance. Was it perfect? No, but it was Naboth. That's right. Not as bad as feared. They saw strength in aerospace, strength in commercial fire products, strength in process solutions, and strength in industrial software. Oh, and the two spinoffs have been terrific for their margins. That's why the stock caught fire in the news, rising from 163 before it reported to 171 today. I actually think it's got more room to run. That's what I'm telling club members. Bottom line, I love it when a company breaks itself up to unlock value for shareholders. But not all breakups are the same. Sometimes you spin off a fabulous business so that it can get an independent valuation. Sometimes you amputate the underperforming divisions that are holding everything back. When Darius and Damchek split the older Honeywell into three separate entities, it was an amputation. He cut out housing and autos to save the rest of the business, and it worked. That's why Honeywell remains a buy, but Garrett and Presidia will stay in the penalty box until they figure out how to turn themselves around. Richard in New York. Richard! Richard! Sir James, thank you kindly for taking my call. Of course. Uh, again, I thank you for my family for making a difference in our life. For what yes. You do. Yes. And that's a big damn deal. But anyway, I'm interested in a now stock and to play for a long, play for the long haul. And I was wondering if General Dynamics is the play, especially with all the distraction with Boeing. No, it's United Technologies, which is going to be uh, combining with Raytheon and spinning out their aerospace business, which is going to be the premier aerospace business in the world. So I want you to go with United Technologies. Look, this is a tough one. I mean, breaking up is supposed to, is hard to do. Uh, uh, but in Honeywell's case, it's a sign to steer clear of two companies that actually are the right, good companies that are interesting. Garrett is the best turbocharger. Residio may be the stuff stated, but it may be someday. I don't know. Honeywell self fell. Oh, it's got room to run. Much more mad money ahead. Women retire with two-thirds the money of men and live six to eight years longer. So how does it impact the way they invest? I'm asking LFS CEO Sally Krawcheck. Then after a busy week of well-received earnings, is it time to take the recession off the table? I'll tell you what I'm seeing. And what your calls rapid fire in tonight's edition of The Lightning Round. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.